In this video, we're going to learn about compositions of transformations. So if you remember what a composition is, a composition of a function um, is basically when you have a function inside of a function. So the input of one function is another function. So if we're talking about composition of transformations, it means that you're going to perform two or more transformations back to back. So you're going to use the results from the first one to perform the second one, use the results of the second one to perform the third one, and so on. So it's basically just two or more transformations. And you're always going to use the results from the first one to do the second one. So the symbol for compositions looks like this. So it's this little open circle. And when I look at this, when we read this, it's a translation of the reflection y equals x. So it means that you're going to do a translation once you've done the reflection. So this notation is the same thing as this. So meaning the input for the translation is the reflection, is what you get from the reflection. So these are the same thing. So when you do composition, so it's you're going to see the little circle, you could see this notation, you could also just see it in words like this right here, a translation of this after reflection. But whenever you do the compositions and they give you this notation here or the function notation, you're always going to work right to left. So you're going to work backwards. You're always going to start with the inside, do that first, what you get out, you're going to do the translation to. Or if it's the composition notation, you're going to do this side first, whatever you get out, you're going to do the second transformation. So here's your same thing. So you're going to do this first, then this part second. Um, and when you do this second part, you're always going to use the coordinates you get out from the first one. So I'm going to just make a note of that. Always use the prime coordinates. for the second transformation. So then the second part down here, the next thing is saying that the order matters. So compositions of two or more transformations is not commutative and that's because order matters. So I'm going to just make a note here. Order matters. And if you take a look at this example, we did the reflection, then we do a translation versus a translation, then a reflection. So if I start at triangle one, we did the reflection, got triangle two, and then we did the translation to get to triangle three. So here's triangle three. If I look over here, first we did the translation, then we did the reflection over the line y equals x. So I went from triangle one in the same spot to triangle three. So we didn't get out the same triangle, which means that the order does matter. And you can see that we switched up the order right here. This was first, so the reflection, then the translation. This one was the translation, then the reflection, and that's why we got a different result. So you have to do right to left when you're doing these compositions. Um, the other thing, too, to make note of here is that if you start with rigid motions and all of your um, transformations are rigid motions, the final result will still be a rigid motion. Um, so you can remember the word isometry is the same thing as a rigid motion. So the composition of two or more isometries or rigid motions you could put here will be a rigid motion, which is the same thing as an isometry. So meaning as long as I only perform um, transformations that are going to keep the same shape and size, my final result will have the same shape and size. So if we look at the next page here, looking at these examples, the first thing you want to do for this one is graph your triangle and then if you look at the composition, this is going to come first and then this one will become second. So we're going to first do a translation. So we're going to start with graphing the triangle. So we have 1, 2 is A, 1, 6 for B, and 6, 6 for C. And the first thing you're doing is the translation. So you're doing the translation of 3, 4, which means you're going to go right 3 and then up 4. 
because remember it's x comma y so this is your horizontal movement your vertical movement you could also just add three to the x's and add four to the y's if you wanted to so a plus three plus four to each of these same thing or you go ahead and move it so if i'm moving them i'm going to go each point right three up four one two three four B is going to go one, two, three, up one, two, three, four. And then C, one, two, three, up one, two, three, four. So either way, you can get your translation. The second thing you're going to do then is going to be your reflection over the x axis. So remember, whenever you do a reflection over the x-axis, really you're just negating the y-values. You negate the opposite. And since I'm doing um, a composition, when I do the second transformation here, I must use the primes. So I need to use... A prime, B prime, C prime. So that means I'm going to go over the x-axis. So this is my line of reflection. You can do this graphically or you can just negate the y-value. So graphically means I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I travel 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice that I'm using the blue triangle because that's my primes. And then to get from B prime, I had to go 10, so I go 10 more. Then C prime, 10 units to get to the x-axis, so travel 10 more units. Or I'm just negating the y values. So remember, I'm taking the y values here and I'm negating them so they come over the x-axis. So now I just state my coordinates here, so A prime, is going to be 4, negative 6. B prime, or B double prime, is going to be 4, negative 10. And C double prime is 9, negative 10. So that's your answer. So it's basically, you just do what we've been doing with transformations. It's just now you have to do one after another. And remember, you could do more than two. Um, transformations, but typically it's going to be true too. Maybe sometimes you do three, but you just always start right to left. So you always do the right hand side, and then whatever you get out, you use that to do the second one. If there was a third one, I would use whatever I got out from the second one to do the third one. Because remember, what this is saying is it's a reflection of the translation. So this was a reflection of the translation. So I translated and then I reflected. So the last one here, you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to do a reflection over the x of the reflection over the y. So you got to start with this reflection over the y, then you're going to do the reflection over the x. So start with your triangle, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, positive 5, So the first one we're going to start with is the reflection over the y-axis. So first thing, you can do it using the rules or you can do it on the graph. Um, so if you're using the rules, you negate the opposite. So you're going to negate the x values. So you would just take each of these coordinates and change the sign of the x values. Otherwise, if you're thinking about it as reflecting over the y, well, here's your line of reflection and you're just counting. So to get from B to the line, it's two units, so go two more. There's B prime. A is two units, so go two more. And C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So go eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's C prime. And then to do the next thing you have to do the reflection over the x-axis so that means you can just take your prime coordinates so the purple triangle and negate the y-values 
or you can count on the graph. So if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, it means that these two points, A and C prime, have to come down and B prime has to go up because each point has to go over that line. So A double prime is going to be located two units below. C double prime will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then B prime, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It's got to come up over the line. And remember that if you didn't want to do this on the graph, if it doesn't say to graph the triangle, you don't have to graph it. Um, otherwise, you know, you can always come up with the coordinates and then go after and graph the final picture if it says to graph. So I get my results. I just have to state them. So A double prime is going to be 2, negative 2. B double prime is 2, 4. And C double prime is 8, comma, negative 5. And remember, I used the primes for the second one. So you use primes for this. So I could have just taken the purple triangle and negated each of those y values, and you would have gotten the same coordinates as what I have here.